name is Sue McLeaf Nispeka, and I am from Kid Lit Plus Consulting. I want to thank the Pennsylvania Office of Commonwealth Libraries for creating this videotape today. I'm going to be talking about sharing books with children ages two and three, and also how to do library story times for those same ages. First of all, let's look at the books. Okay, when selecting books for children ages two and three, we want books with bright colors and subjects that are familiar to your child's world. As you see here, the guy driving a car. Uh, things about families, animals, typical activities like dressing or feeding oneself, and then some basic uh, concepts like color books, uh, ABC book, counting books, not to teach these skills and not to drill children, but just to introduce them to some simple concepts for enjoyment. Now, one of the things uh, we're looking for for children for two and threes, particularly two-year-olds, you only want like one sentence or two sentences. And for three-year-olds, you know, not too much more. It's not going to be a real lengthy text, just a few sentences per page. Uh, when the children reach ages four and five, then we can have the longer text. We want books that have, uh, contain sounds, recurring words, rhythm, rhyme, or books that will allow your child to participate in some manner. Maybe they uh, will make a simple sound that an animal makes, like the cow says, and then you pause for them to put the word moo in there. Uh, we want to share books that allow for sensory experiences, such as flaps to raise, or surfaces to touch, or peekaboo books, or pop-up books. Children love pop-up books. Uh, share books that show children of varying ages and different ethnic backgrounds. Uh, encourage, we want to encourage children to participate by talking or making sounds or doing motions. And then we can start asking some simple questions so your child can participate, like what animal is this? Or what color is the frog? Um, or we can help children develop predictive skills by asking, what do you think will happen next? Or show the cover of a book and say, what do you think this book is going to be about? Just looking at the cover, we, what animal is this? And what are they wearing? So some simple little questions and then what's this book gonna be about? It's good to continue sharing nursery rhymes and song books with uh, children ages two to three. It's excellent for language development, but also for phonological awareness, which is a skill children need to have to learn to read, both books and rhymes and songs, songs because there is one note for every syllable in a word, like Mary had a little lamb. There's one note for every syllable in a word. It helps children hear the smaller sounds and words, which helps them with phonological awareness, a skill they need to learn to read. We want to read with expression, using different voices, vocalizing sounds to keep the child's interest, to make the book come alive, um, and share books enthusiastically. You know, if you don't like the book, the kids aren't going to like the book. So it has to be a book that you like and you can be enthusiastic about so the children will ask to hear it again. And by the way, <laughs> that's another little key. Children will often ask at this age to hear books over and over and over again. Sometimes we get tired of that. It's actually wonderful for them because they love the repetition, but they will also begin to identify words and they will start joining in with the reading. And so this is really good. It's also good to present one book in different ways. Maybe we read it one time, maybe we sing it, uh, maybe we do some puppets with it, presenting it in different ways. This repetition is very helpful for kids. Okay, let's look at some books that are good for twos and threes. I'm going to talk about different categories of books. You know, books go out of print very quickly. So, you know, I might be showing you some things and they're out of print already um, the next day even. <laughs> but what I'm going to talk about is just show examples and talk about different categories. And when new books come out, maybe you can figure out which books go in these types of categories. These categories are categories that will appeal to children ages two to three or are good for them for whatever reason. And the first one's one that's good for them, and that is predictable stories, things that are predictable, things that have refrains, things that they can predict uh, what the next word's gonna be. Now, I have the board book version of this one, though it comes in large edition also. It's called Dear Zoo. It's been around for a while. It's a nice little lift the flat book, but it's also very predictable. So they sent me a, 
and then you find out what animal the zoo sent each time. You know, repetitious text. Uh, duck, sock, hop, another predictable book, also done in rhyme. Ducks line up to dance in rows. They kick their feet and touch their toes. Ducks drop crumbs, ducks spill juice, socks get sticky, socks get loose. So we got the nice repetitious rhyme there. Um, another book that I don't have in front of me right now, but I'm sure you might be aware of, it's called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? And that is a book that, again, it's a color book, which is perfect for these ages. It has a repetitious um, line, refrain in it. So that's a book that's good for twos and threes. It's also good for preschoolers and even children learning to read. Dinosaur versus bedtime, or dinosaur versus the library. What children don't like dinosaurs, even at the age of two and three? Again, you'll notice this is a very simple text not too many words per page, and the children get to join in. They get to participate. They get to roar like the dinosaur roars. So they'll love that. Okay, let's move on to another category. Another good thing to pick for twos and threes are stories that are in rhyme, like this one. It's a classic. Now, there's five or six different books that followed this one in the series. It's called Llama, Llama, Red Pajama, definitely in rhyme. Llama, Llama, Red Pajama, reads a story with his mama. Mama kisses baby's hair. Mama, Llama goes downstairs. Llama, Llama, Red Pajama, feels alone without his mama. So it's done in rhyme, great for young children, ages two and three. Here's another one called Go, Go, Grapes. They also had raw, raw radishes. Nice to introduce children to fruits and vegetables at this young age. Again in rhyme, raw, raw raspberries, go, go grapes. Savor the flavors, fine fruity shapes. Blackberries, blueberries, bag a bunch. Strawberry season, let's munch a munch. Nice colorful pictures, nice rhyme. I'm gonna move on to another category. This is interactive books where the kids can interact with it. This is a kind of a guessing game book. We're gonna plant a seed, little seed, little seed, falling to the ground. What will you be? What kind of seed is it gonna be? Each time I read a page, a page folds out in this book, as you can see, uh, till we finally get the identification of what this seed is gonna be. See, we read each page, fold it out, and we find that it is a sunflower. And then if you lift the flap here, there's even more information about the sunflower underneath the flap, how to grow sunflowers. So it's a nice little interactive book. Uh, this author not only has the sunflower one, uh, but also one on frogs, little green frogs by Francis Berry. I will tell you that all the books that I'm talking about um, will be, you can go to a link and the full uh, bibliographic information is there. Uh, this is another pop-out book. It's wonderful, interactive, a pop-out surprise book. What am I? I love to chew in biscuits and bones. You can walk me on a leash, too. What am I? <gasps> a dog. And they'll love the element of surprise of this very large dog, you know, popping out at them. I'm shiny and smooth and covered in scales. My gills help me breathe underwater. I live in a tank or a bowl like this. What am I? A fish. And then you could ask the kids, what color is the fish? So that they could also participate. That's the giant pop out. Here's uh, one last one in this interactive category. This is Cat by Matthew Van Fleet. I found out quite by accident that you can sing this book. Cool Cat Copycat, you can read it or sing it. Cool Cat Copycat Striped Cat Spots. Cat with a ball of yarn, swat, swat, swat. <laughs> and you can sing it the whole way through. There's little squeaks and all types of things in it. Okay, talking about cats, there's also a dog one. Uh, let's move into another category of animals. I love this book by Bob Barner. It talks about bears around the world. Again, you'll look, there's a simple text, not very lengthy, identifies different kinds of bears. This was one of those books when you uh, took off the cover, actually, of the book. It has a map showing where the bears, of the, the bears of the world that are described in that book, where they're located. 
So that was just another little extra that came along with the cover of that book. Here's a farm book, a big fold out book about colors that they can identify the animal. I'm sweet and gentle. My milk is good for you. My hair is white with big black spots. You'll know me by my moo. What am I? Again, you ask the kids, they can participate. And again, it has a wonderful fold out. They fold out real far. So this would be really dramatic to use in a story time program. Kids would really, really, really love that. Uh, one other one here uh, about animals. We have Sims Tabax City Animals. This is another guessing game book. Who am I? I gather acorns. I have a big furry tail. I'm a squirrel. Again, a wonderful one for story time because the pictures are going to fold out and it's a very uh, large thing to look at. And of course, you can't forget the pigeon. He's a very popular character. There's a lot of pigeon books. I think uh, twos, threes, fours, and fives, they all love this. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. They can participate along with it. A simplistic book, but they love it. Talking of buses, we're going to move on to another category that's just really good for twos and threes. They love books about vehicles and transportation. Uh, so then we could use books like that first one I held up at the beginning called My Car by Brian Barton. The guy's driving his car and we find out he gets to work and then he, at work he drives a bus. And of course after that you'd have to sing the Wheels of the Bus song. Here's one called The Little Dump Truck that's done completely in rhyme about a dump truck. Where do diggers sleep at night? Where do diggers sleep at night? I think I'm gonna to have to read the book to find out myself. Where do they sleep at night? And this one, construction kitties. <laughs> with these little kitties with their hard hats on and all types of little construction equipment. Uh, so that's another category they'll like. How about some simple concept books? Again, not to drill children, but just to, um, you know, expose them to counting and numbers and colors. Here's an oldie but a goodie called Planning a Rainbow by Lois Ehlert. And it is a planting uh, bulbs and seeds. And we get all the different colors of the rainbow at the end of this story, which I'll show you momentarily. And when we get to the end of the book, you'll see the, we can look at it like this. <laughs> We can see all the colors of the rainbow. We got the, whoops, I'm forgetting the red. We gotta start with the red. We have red flowers and orange flowers and yellow flowers and green and blue and violet, purple. So that's a nice little, not only is it a concept book that you're learning how to plant from seeds and bulbs, et cetera, but it's also good for colors. Denise Fleming has one called Shout, Shout It Out. Again, nice bright colors. It has the letters of the alphabet in it. It has numbers in it. It has colors in it. It has animals in it and the sounds they make and what they do. Perfect concept book for twos and threes. Um, another one by Denise Fleming called Lunch. Uh, she, she has really nice, she has a lot of nice um, colorful books which are perfect for this age. And this is another one about vegetables and fruits and things and the colors they are. A uh, concept book on numbers by Petra Horacek. It's called One Spotted Giraffe. We have the number, we see the giraffe. But here's an interesting thing. The pop-out number actually looks like the creature. Let me show you another number. Let's go to the six colorful chameleons. You see the number six and one more, seven screeching toucans. <laughs> There's the number seven, but it kind of looks like a toucan. So that's a nice intriguing book. Uh, this one is by Bill Martin Jr. It's called Ten Little Caterpillars. He's the guy who did Brown Bear, Brown Bear. And again, it's a nice little uh, counting book, uh, bright uh, colored pictures in that one also. Moving on to another category, what about naming body parts? You know, they're really good at this age doing this. I love you nose, I love you toes. Again, a little bit more text, but not too lengthy uh, for the twos and threes. And another theme, how about friendship? Kids are starting to understand friendship and the concept of friendship at this age. I love these books by Will Hillenbrand about the bear and the mole. There's several of them. This is just one, Spring is Here. Again, beautiful illustrations, uh, simple text. Several books in this series about Pip and Posey, the big balloon. These are by Noisy Crow, um, Nosy Crow, excuse me, publisher. Again, bright colors, simple text. 
It's a nice little friendship story. I'm going to show you a couple here kind of quickly. Bear says thanks by Karma Wilson. Bear and all his friends. Uh, so the friendship theme there. Moving on to another theme, themes of families. They're starting to understand the concept of families. This is We All Belong Together by Todd Parr. He also has a daddy book and a mommy book. Uh, some funny family stories. How about the No David by David Shannon? This David just gets himself into all kinds of trouble, uh, as you can see. His mother uh, really has her hands full with him. One of the things that we find out often is when kids get to school, a lot of times they do not even know some of the simple folk tales, which is really sad. We need to introduce those. Well, we can start introducing them even at this young age, even more so at age four and five. This one's the three bears, but as you can see, it's a very simple text, um, very simplistic pictures. This is by Brian Barton. How about emotions or feelings? This is A Good Day by Kevin Hankies. It has colors in it. Again, simplistic text, nice illustrations. Talks about a little girl and how happy she is when she finds a feather. I must have Bobo. Oh, boy, this poor boy just loves his sock monkey. Loves him to death. But so does the cat. And the cat keeps stealing. Earl, the cat keeps stealing his monkey from him, his Bobo. And Bobo is like his little security blanket. Okay, let's move on to another category. This is a category that, the last category I'm going to talk about. And it's, uh, it's one that you really should use a lot, and that are song picture books. Uh, it's good to use music with these young children. This is the classic, of course, Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. Uh, but don't forget the classics, because believe it or not, we think every kid has heard this. They might not have, so don't forget the classics. Here's the babies on the bus. It's the wheels of the bus, but it's kind of a different version with the babies on the bus. You even have a baby bus driver. How that happens, I don't know. Now, here is the standard um, absolute uh, favorite book <laughs> for every library and every library story time. Kids love, love, love Pete the Cat. Uh, I'm going to play just a little bit of it. I'm sure most of you know it. You can actually download the song. There's a website. You can download it and um, hear the song. And I'm going to try to pull it up right now. I'll show you. I have a uh, poster of Pete right here. And I'll try to get my props. I just have used uh, Velcro so that uh, you can actually <coughs> um, fasten the shoes and change them each time there's a different color that comes up. So we'll see if we can get Pete the cat to play here. Pete the cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. I love my white shoes, 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 I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. <gasps> oh, no! Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. strawberries. What, what color, color did it turn, turn his shoes? shoes? Red. Red! Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! He, he kept walking, walking along and, and singing his song. song. Okay, so that's, and again, it's one that kids like an awful lot. And it's one, like I said, I have Velcro. I usually have this up on an easel so that I can easily put the pieces on there. He wears his red shoes and then finally blue shoes because he steps in some blueberries. And then he steps in some mud and his shoes turn brown. And then he steps in a bucket of water and his shoes are white again, but now they're wet. But it doesn't matter. He doesn't cry because it's all good, <laughs> which is a wonderful message for children. No matter what happens to us in life, just keep walking along. Everything's, everything's good. Now, that, of course, is another story that's also good. The fours and fives love it, too. But it's a nice one to introduce to the twos and threes because of the colors. All right, I'm going to talk now about uh, story time programs and some tips for doing story times for twos and threes. 
When you're doing a story time for twos and threes, please make sure the caregiver, of course, they're going to have to be in the room too. But you know, we want them to participate in all the activities in the rhymes and songs. We do not want them sitting there texting or whatever. So you, you, you have to give, you know, whatever message you need to give, like uh, no cell phones in the story time room or whatever, no using cell phones in the story time room. So you want them to participate in the activities, in the rhymes and the songs. The most important thing you have to remember is children, particularly at the age of two, do not have the fine motor skills where they can do a finger play like this, like three little kittens sitting in a tree. They do not have the fine motor skills where they can do that. So the kind of rhymes and songs we want to do are things where they're opening and closing their hands, like open your hands, close your hands, give a great big clap, open your hands, close your hands, lay them in your lap. Or if it is a countdown rhyme, they can hold up the finger, instead of putting one finger down at a time, which they can't do, and quite frankly, I have difficulty myself sometimes, <laughs> is you can point to one finger at a time. Or, you know, the parent could actually help them. But just remember, they're not gonna have those small motor skills. Uh, some young children might watch and listen. They might not wanna participate. Don't let that throw you off, just keep going. What you're trying to do is model to the parent how to share books enthusiastically, how to get kids to participate in the storytelling, and how to share rhymes and songs with their children at home on a regular basis. That's the most important thing you can do in a story time program. Uh, story times usually are thematically arranged for this age. If you do select a theme, make sure that every rhyme and song and activity is developmentally appropriate. Uh, have the adults sit down on the floor right with the children. Uh, and remember, at this age, they have a very short attention span. So we wanna use short age appropriate stories and quick activities that also allow the kids to get up and move around a little bit too. Uh, when you're offering a series of programs, try to repeat some of the activities from week to week. Kids love the repetition, it helps them learn. Uh, provide a sheet of activities that's used that the parent can take home or the caregiver can take home uh, with early literacy tips on it and the rhymes and songs you use that day. I want to point out just a couple of resources. You know, there aren't a whole lot of resources out there for children who are ages two and three. They're usually just for twos rather than twos and threes. But a lot of the ones that are for twos, you know, can also be used for threes. You can just kind of uh, look at them and see, you know, where, where it fits. Uh, now, one little quick explanation. A lot of times libraries will call story times for twos and threes toddler story time. And actually that's kind of an incorrect word to use. Uh, the word toddler actually means when a child is toddling. So that would be when the child is just toddling along and starting to learn to walk, which is usually long before two. So um, if you, you know, if you use the word toddler story time, you're probably kind of misleading parents what age that story time is for. I would just call it a story time for twos and threes because toddler is really for kids who are toddling. Okay, I'm just gonna mention just two, and these both have toddler in the title, uh, story times, but they're so supposed to be for kids two years old. One is by Diane Briggs, it's called Toddler Story Times 2. She had a, a first edition, this is a second edition. And then Story Times for Two-Year-Olds by Judy Nichols. This was put out by the American Library Association. I would also like to quickly mention a resource that I've been working on with Upstart, which is a, a division of Demco, and it's called the Very Ready Reading Program. And in it, there are um, 20 story times for children ages two and three. They're on um, laminated sheets, so you can just take it right out and have it near you so you know what you're doing. There is a tip sheet for the librarian. There is a take-home sheet. You can just copy them off for the parents that have early literacy tips for them. And there's also a CD that has all the songs that are in the story time on the CD. And that's part of the Very Ready Reading Program. So that's the only resource I know right now out there that's specifically for ages two and three together. Okay, let's talk briefly about uh, a story time. I'm going to give you a little uh, suggested template, and I will tell you, because I'm going to go through this story time a little bit quickly, there is a link where you can get this entire information, the complete rhyme, the template I'm talking about, it's all there. <laughs> so a template I'm going to mention here, let's start with an opening song or rhyme, and then use a book that's appropriate uh, for the two-year-olds. Follow with uh, a combination of uh, two activities. It could be a finger play and a song or a uh, finger play and a stand up stretch thing. So we have a book, song, opening song, book, two activities, book, two activities, book, two activities, and a closing song. That's a, a simple template for a, a story time. 
Uh, you might have some little art activity or a little thing at the end of the story time. Okay, let's just quickly talk about one. Uh, I'm gonna give the example of Old MacDonald's Farm because children at these ages are really into animals and the sounds animal make, etc. So we're gonna start with an opening song and this is uh, simply sung to Farmer in the Dell. It's time for story time, it's time for story time. Hi-ho the dairy oh it's time for story time. We listen to some stories, we listen to some stories, and we sing some songs and rhymes. And the last verse, and now we'll have some fun. Okay, my first little early literacy tip here is, our first book that I'm going to read today is in rhyme, and reading rhyming books helps children hear parts of words, which is an important pre-reading skill. And then I would share something like this, Barnyard Banter, which is done by Denise Fleming. It's uh, bright colors. It's done in rhyme. It's another book you can sing if you want to. Cows in the pasture. Cows in the pasture, moo, moo, moo. Roosters in the barnyard, cock-a-doodle-doo. Hens in the hen house, cluck, cluck, cluck. Pigs in the walla, muck, muck, muck. But where's Goose? Okay, that'd be a good opening uh, book. And then I'm gonna follow some rhymes. I have a little boy blue rhyme that you can act out. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. I have the motions right there. Then I'm gonna give another early literacy tip. Uh, we're going to clap to the beat and the chorus of the next song. Have children clap along with songs at home. By clapping to the syllables and words, children are hearing that words are divided into syllables or different parts. And so um, then we would uh, sing the Down on Grandpa's Farm. I hope you know that. That was one that Raffi made famous. Down on Grandpa's Farm, there is a little red hen. Down on Grandpa's Farm, there is a little red hen. The hen, she makes a sound like this. Bah, bah. Again, uh, that Very Ready Reading program I mentioned has all the uh, songs right on there. So that tune would be there. Okay, and then we have another book. Now, I always... Um, like to see one participation book in every story time. So you could have uh, something like this, which is called I Spy on the Farm, where kids get to join in. I spy with my little eye something yellow on the farm that begins with the letter D. What do you think it might be? And if they don't guess, I might tell them, and it says, quack, quack. <gasps> That's right, this is a little duck. It's a duckling. So this is a nice little book where they can participate. I've followed by another rhyme, like a little Bo Peep. And again, I have the motions there. I might give a third early literacy tip. I don't like to give more than three early literacy tips per story time. I think that's enough. But the third one, some songs tell a story. When sharing such songs at home, encourage children to retell the story and add more details. Um, and so, you know, the song that I'm going to talk or share would be Mary Had a Little Lamb, and I would sing that to traditional tune. And in my third book, I usually like to have some, some kind of visual or some kind of interesting thing. Uh, you can do uh, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, and there's uh, several places on the web where you can find uh, pattern pieces to make uh, flannel or magnetic board stories of Old MacDonald. Um, and this, this, this book's kind of neat because it has the, a song chip. So the song chip's right in there. Okay, and then I would follow it by a rhyme, this little cow eats grass. Now this is one where if it were preschool, they could put their fingers down. But this case, I'm just gonna point to one finger at a time, then sing the old McDonald's song, and then close with a closing rhyme. It'd be the same rhyme I would use every week. If you wanna have a little optional art activity, uh, uh, I know a lot of libraries do coloring sheets. I don't necessarily recommend coloring sheets. I think it's nice to have something where the kids can have hands-on sensory experiences, open-ended uh, projects uh, where the process matters and not so much the product. So what I would probably give the kids here in this example of this farm one would be maybe give them some cookie cutters with farm animals and they could use them to uh, cut out shapes out of Play-Doh. Okay, I want to finish uh, this up with a little bit of talking about music and using music with kids twos and threes. You know, we want to keep the song short and within their vocal range. Kids at this age can only usually do one octave or a note or two above it. Uh, so we're going to use less verses. Now in a story time for twos and threes, if I use Old MacDonald's Farm, I'm only going to use maybe three verses, three verses with that. If I were doing a preschool, a lot of four and five year old kids, a lot longer verses. I'm going to use familiar songs, repeat them often, sing songs a little slower, emphasize the syllables, 
include movement or emotions with the songs. And another thing uh, that's good to use are echo songs, where the kids echo a line after you. Let's look at some good um, instruments for the twos and threes. You know, there's a lot of wonderful things, uh, maracas and rattles and things. Uh, here's, um, I love these because they have colorful streamers on them and so they can play the bells, but they also have these wonderful streamers that go along with them. Here's, um, this is in the shape of a moon. I think that's kind of interesting. You know, the egg shakers that they can shake, uh, the lollipop drums. There's different sites for music. Um, I like West Music. Uh, they have a website and also a company called Music in Motion or Rhythm Band. Uh, colorful bean bags are good to use. These are actually some homemade sand blocks. It's just uh, wood with some sandpaper. And here are some what are called uh, ribbon rainbow, excuse me, rainbow rhythm sticks. And of course, they're going to love those. Um, each child can have a different stick with the different colors of the rainbow on. Uh, you could even have uh, parents help make some simple instruments, like this is a simply a little water bottle with uh, some beans, beans in it to make sounds. Uh, I would recommend using a parachute. Kids love parachutes. You can bounce stuffed animals on them. Um, we can um, use a hula hoop, and the children are holding on to it while walking in a circle to the music. Um, or um, one last little thing I'm going to show you. This is, uh, this is handmade. Actually, the parents could help make it. This is actually a canning lid jar, but you can also go to your hobby stores and find just craft rings the same size. And I just bought some um, satin ribbon and tied like the colors of the rainbow on. And it's something they can hold on to and use, and they will love that. Uh, scarves are another good thing to use with music. So don't forget to include some music within your story time programs. So I'm going to thank you for joining me today. Again, this is with books um, and programming for children ages two and three. Don't forget to go to the link to get more information about everything I talked about today. Thank you.